What's up guys, today in the seventh part of creating an online food store using Angular, we wanna add the search bar and the search functionality to the project and make it like this. By adding this functionality, the user can search for the food like this. We can see the result. So watch this video to the end to see how. So the first thing that we want to do right now is adding the search route into the app routing module. Why we want to do that? Because we want to be able to get the search term from the route in all of our components. Let's do it. Inside the code, let's go into the app routing module, inside the app, app routing module. Inside the routes field, we want to add another route. This path should be search slash. So when we look at the route, we could see the search and the parameter that will be defined by writing colon and the name of that road parameter that is search term in our case. But where should it go? It should go to the home component because we are showing our products inside the home component. Here we go. The first step is done. Let's save it and go for the next step. Now we need to listen to the road inside the home component and filter the foods based on the search term inside the road. For doing this, we need activated road that is part of Angular. Let's import it inside the home component and use it. Here inside the code, let's close this one. Here inside home and home component TS file, let's import the activated road from, from Angular or slash router. Now it's imported inside the home component. The second step is injecting activated road inside the property through the constructor of home component. It's so easy to do that. Just write private route, the name of the property, it could be anything, and the type that is activated route. That's it. Now we can have access to this route throughout this home component. Now let's listening to the road parameters using this activated road instance. Here inside the ng on init, we need to write route.params the subscribe. It means whenever this params changed, notify this function that we will put inside this subscribe function. Okay, so as you know, this is a function. After doing this, anytime the params change, we have the new params here. Now we need to check the params that if it has the search term. Let's say if params.search term is not undefined, then make this.foods, I mean this food list that we want to send to the view should be this.food service dot get all dot filter filter foods if the food dot name to lowercase we want to make this to lowercase because maybe you search a food in uppercase or in lowercase in both case you should be able to find that food so i want to convert all the strings to the lowercase so they will have always the same case okay that includes means if the food name contains some character from the search term then now we need to mention the search term. Just say params.search term to lowercase. Okay, because the search term should be converted to lowercase too. So both of them gonna have the same case. We can convert the name and the search term both to the uppercase. No difference. Okay. But both of them should have the same case because in searching, we don't care about the case. Uppercase or lowercase, doesn't matter. It should find the food. And done. So it's going to be like this food service. We want to filter all the foods when the food name, lowercase name of the food contains or includes the search term dot lowercase. It's easy, right? We also need to have a default case when there is no search term. Okay. And else that's going to have this default case inside it here. Let's format it. And here we go. When there is a search term, we're going to filter the foods based on the search. Maybe you have no idea what it will do in action. Let's see it in the browser. Here inside the browser, we need to write search slash, for example, meat or meatball. We're going to find the meatball. That's it. It works. But we don't have the search bar here. That's the next step. But we did this part. Let's go and check this one. Here we want to start creating the search component because we don't want to write the search term directly inside the address bar. We want our website to be usable for everyone. 
Okay, inside the VS Code, let's open up the terminal in the new tab. Let's generate a new component using ng, gc, and search. There we go. Close this inside the Explorer. We have the search component right now. So we did this part. Check this one. Now we need to add the search term property inside the search component. Okay, let's open up the search folder inside the search component TS file. Let's add search term that is of type string and its default value should be empty. We did the second part of creating search component. Let's go over the third one. Now we need to add the search text input and button into the template. So let's go into the search component template file. And here we need to remove this. Let's add a div here. And inside the div, we need to have an input type text, placeholder, search food mine, and the value should be equal to search term. So by doing this, we are binding the search term from the component to the view. The next thing that we need to add here is a button that will not do anything right now. And there is a search text inside it. Now we have input and button inside our search template file. Let's go and check this one. Now we need to get the activated root once again inside the search component for getting the search term from the URL and show it inside the search input box. Let's do it. Let's go to the search component TS file. And here we need to import activated route from Angular router. Now we need to inject it inside the property by writing private route and activated route. Just like how we did for the home component. Now we have an instance of activated route inside the route field and we can use it inside the ng on init. So we need to write route.params that subscribe params and we need to set this search term using the params dot search term. So we just need to write this dot search term is equal to params dot search term. Okay, we did this part too. Now before going over to the search function, I want to add another step here that is adding the search component into the home components template file for showing that input text and bottom. Let's do this. The name of our search component is app-search. So we need to add it inside the home component template file here before this URL. app-search. Okay, now we should be able to see this app-search at the top of our foods. As you can see, we have it here and it's not so cool, right? It's because we are not talking about CSS in this session. Oh, as you can see, it's undefined. It means we don't have any search term. We should fix this by going into the search component here before setting the params into the search term. We should check if params dot search term. It means if the search term has any value, then set the search term. Otherwise, don't do anything. So the default value is going to be an empty string. So basically, it's not undefined. Now, if we look at the result, we can see the placeholder and it says search food mine. Now, if we write search and meet, we could see that meet inside the search term. That's what we wanted to do in this session and we did it. Let's check it inside the bullet points. In this step, we are able to get the search term from the URL, but we are not able to push a search term into the URL for a new search, okay? And the search function is where we need to implement this functionality. We should command the road to show the search term and do the search. Okay, the first step is creating the search function. It's easy. Inside the search component, we just need to write search, the name of the function, and the return type of the function that is void, not gonna return anything, just gonna command the router. So we just made the search function. But before going any farther, we should import the router here because we want to be able to change the route. And it's possible using the router class. Let's do it. Here beside the activated route, we need to write router. Activated route is for reading from the route and router is useful for writing into the route. And just like activated route, we need to write private router. This is router, not route and router. So Angular going to inject a new instance of router here and we're going to use it easily. We don't need to think about it. 
we just need to write it like this and it's going to be ready. So we have the router and we can use it right now inside the search component. OK, it's ready. Let's check this one. But we have a problem here. And the problem is inside the template file here, we are pushing the search term from component into the view. But we need to get the search term from the view and the user enters a new value. This is the problem of one way binding. You can't get the value that the user will enter. So here's where we need two way binding. But before going any farther, let's talk about the types of data binding inside Angular. We have two types of data binding one way data binding and two way data binding. In one way data binding, we have two directions for the data binding component to the view that will be used for property binding, something like interpolation that we did for the price. And we have another direction for the binding that is view to component or HTML to TypeScript that is event binding. For example, by clicking on that button, something should happen. That's an event. That's a click even, okay? Or by changing some text inside an input, something should happen. That's a change event, okay? That's from the HTML file to the TypeScript file or from the view to the component, okay? But in two-way binding, we have both of them at the same time. We have event binding that will be shown by parentheses. We have property binding that will be shown by square brackets for ng model. That's what we use for implementing two-way binding. The behavior of ng model is like this. Whenever we change the ng model inside the component, that's how it works from template to the component by event from component to the template by property binding. Now let's talk about our search term that we want to use inside our search component. We should implement the ng model part like this. We have an ng model that's inside round brackets and square brackets at the same time. And the final input will be like this. We have an input and an ng model and the property of our component that we want to have two ways binding so whenever we change our search term inside the component this input will show that changes inside it and whenever we write something inside this input we could see that it has the final text that we wrote inside the search input now that you know what's the difference between one-way binding and two-way binding it's time to continue the implementation of search component for having ng model inside our project, we need to add forms module because ng model is part of forms module that is part of Angular 2. We need to add it inside, guess it? Yes, app.module.ts, where we did add the rating module too. Okay, let's import forms module from Angular forms. There we go. We have the forms module. Now we just need to put it inside the imports part of our app module. We did it. Let's check this one. Now it's time for using ng model inside our input. Let's jump into the code. Let's close the app module and we don't need this value binding anymore because by using the two way binding, we have one way binding too. Let's remove it and write square brackets, round brackets and ng model equal to search term. Now, if we look at the result and search for something, we still can see the meet here. It means we have the one way binding too. Now it's time for reading our text, for example, pizza and putting it inside the router. Let's check this one. And let's go for using the router inside the search function. Here inside the search component, we should check if we have a valid search term inside the text box. Then we need to command the router that navigate by URL into the search route by the search term parameter of this dot search term. But it's not going to work because we didn't add the function inside the bottom. We just need to set its click to search. Here we go. Let's see the result and let's write, for example, pizza and press this search. As you can see, we have the result. And we have the pizza as a search term inside the route. It's perfect, but there is a small problem. You can't search by pressing enter. For example, if I remove this and I press enter, it's not going to work. It's because we need to add another event here. So when we change the text and press enter, it's going to call the search function too. Okay. The event is change and the function is search just like the search. 
So we have two options for search. One by writing the search text inside the text box and pressing the search button. And the other one is just by writing the search text inside the search box and pressing enter. It's better to have two options, right? Let's see the result and let's write meet and press enter. It's changed. So it works. Let's go and check this one and this one and this one. As you can see, everything is finished. Let's check this one too. So what we're going to do next in the next episode, we have a very short session for making this search box beautiful by using CSS. So stay tuned for the next session and don't forget to subscribe and hit that bell button to not miss the future videos. And feel free to ask your questions. I will be so happy by answering your questions. See you in the next video. And to that time, have a good life.